Hey friend, welcome back to the Sage Audio channel. Today we'll be looking at the top five compression techniques that you can use to improve your mixes or masters. We'll be covering a step-by-step -step process for how you can replicate these compression techniques, as well as listening to some A-B comparisons so you can hear their effect for yourself. So stick around for the full video, but first, if this is a topic that you find interesting, I'd highly recommend looking into the blog post that's associated with this video. You can find the link for that in the description box below. Also, if you're an artist, engineer, or producer, and you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample of it. All you gotta do is set up the short account, upload the song, and we can do the rest. Number one, kick and bass ducking. Mixing kick and bass can be difficult. Their frequency responses can often overlap, which can lead to unwanted masking and phase cancellation, the end result being a muddy and undefined sound. The desire for these two elements, the kick and the bass, to be more defined resulted in this first compression technique. With this technique, we can reduce the amplitude of the kick whenever the bass is played, or the amplitude of the bass whenever the kick is hit. Either way, you're creating some sonic space for the other instrument to occupy. So let's say that we wanted the kick to be attenuated whenever a bass note was played. Here is how to accomplish kick and bass ducking for this particular situation. Step one, you'd insert a sidechain compatible compressor on your kick track. Step two, change the sidechain setting from none to your bass track. So if you titled this track bass, then it would show up as bass under this menu. Now, with some plugins, the sidechain bass guitar should already be triggering the compressor, but if this isn't happening, additional settings may need to be put in place. So step three, if the compressor is not being triggered by the bass's signal, you'll need to set the sidechain as the compressor's main input. Now this may mean selecting the sidechain as the key input, as is the case with the Pro Tools stock compressor, but for this FabFilter Pro C that we're using for this example, it means selecting Expert and then selecting EXT or external triggering of the sidechain. Step four, adjust your compression settings. One dB of attenuation is a good start, but if more compression is needed, you can increase your ratio or lower your threshold until you find that the bass guitar is made more prominent in your mix. Now, just like with a normal compression setup, you can alter your threshold, your ratio, attack, release, and any other additional functions to dial in the sound that you want. Now, although personal preference does play a role, try not to make this effect too extreme unless you're doing it for a creative purpose, since it's going to become noticeable and maybe distracting to most listeners. So let's take a listen to a before and after of this effect. Number two, full mix and vocal ducking. Now, similar to how a kick can be attenuated with ducking whenever a bass note is played, an entire mix can be attenuated whenever the lead vocal is being sung. Now, if you want your vocal to sit on top of your mix, you can use a compressor to attenuate the full mix whenever the vocal is being sung. This way, the vocal always has a slightly greater amplitude than the mix. Step one, export the entirety of your mix minus the vocal as a stereo file or you can send the entirety of your mix, minus the vocal, to one auxiliary track using a bus send. The idea being you have one track that's just your instrumental mix. Step two, insert a sidechain compatible compressor on your stereo mix track or the auxiliary track you just sent your mix to. Step three, change the sidechain input from none to your lead vocal. For example, if you titled your lead vocal lead vox, select lead vox in the sidechain menu. Step four, if your compressor is not being triggered whenever your vocal is playing, additional settings may need to be adjusted, similar to our previous example. Now, speaking out of personal opinion and preference, although this method does provide an easy way for your vocal to stand out, it's not ideal. The reason being, uh, this compression method can reduce the dynamics of your mix and often sounds unnatural if the attenuation is greater than 0.5 dB. 
Now that being said, it still offers an incredibly quick and effective way for your vocals to stand out and works well for both pop and rap tracks. So let's take a quick listen to it. Number three, parallel compression. Parallel compression sounds great on vocals, drum tracks, and entire mixes. Knowing how to perform parallel compression and how to get the best sound possible out of your compressor can really improve the sound of your production. So step one, create a bus or auxiliary send on the channel that you want to affect. In Logic Pro X, this will automatically create a new auxiliary track, but in Pro Tools or other DAWs, you may need to manually create this track. Step two, set the send level to unity or zero dB. This will make the signal on the auxiliary track equal in amplitude to the signal of your channel. Step three, insert a compressor on the auxiliary track. Now, personally, I enjoy a compressor with a, a lot of character, one that adds harmonic generation or small distortions to the signal. Now, typically, a compressor that models itself off of analog equipment can do this. Step four, using your compressor's various functions, greatly compress the signal. Now I like to compress the signal roughly 10 dB to 20 dB or even more in some circumstances. Now it's best to compress the signal significantly, otherwise it won't really have the intended effect. Step five, decrease the channel fader of your parallel compressed auxiliary track to a very low level, and then increase the output gain of your compressor to nearly its maximum or its maximum level. Now this will cause the sound of the compressor to come through. Step six, slowly increase the level of the auxiliary track's channel fader until you've blended your parallel compressed signal and your original signal to your liking. Now, if you'd like to control any other aspects of your parallel compression, like the frequency response, the distortion level, or anything else, you can follow your parallel compression with another plugin on the auxiliary track. A little distortion or harmonic generation on your parallel compressed auxiliary track can really bring out some of the enjoyable character from your parallel compression. Now what you choose to add to your parallel compression will probably depend on what you're compressing. For example, if you're using parallel compression for your lead vocal, it may be a good idea to follow that parallel compressor with an equalizer and then attenuate the higher frequencies of the compression. The reason being, sibilant and space frequencies will be made much more apparent during the parallel compression process. So attenuating them with an equalizer will definitely help to keep our vocal balanced. Now, if you're compressing an entire mix, like you would be in a mastering session, you can follow your parallel compression with a mid-side equalizer and maybe amplify the side image in the higher frequency range. This way, you can make your side image more prevalent and perceivable, in turn increasing the width of your master. Let's listen to a before and after comparison. What is wrong with me? Do I care to carefully? What is wrong with me? Does somebody know? What is wrong with me? Do my thoughts go away too deep? What is wrong with me? Does somebody know? At number four, we got serial compression. Now, serial compression isn't discussed too often, nor is it a particularly popular compression technique, but it does offer some very practical uses that can greatly improve both mixes and masters. All you gotta do to perform serial compression is follow one compressor with another, usually identical compressor. So if you're compressing a vocal, your next insert on your vocal signal chain would be another compressor. Usually serial compression takes some of the burden off of compressing with just one compressor and it splits it between two compressors. Doing this makes your compression less noticeable as particularly loud dynamics won't hit either compressor hard enough to cause significant attenuation. So let's listen to one compressor attenuating a vocal track by roughly 10 dB and then two compressors attenuating this vocal by 5 dB each to see if we can hear a difference. 
Do my thoughts go way too deep? What is wrong with me? Does somebody know? Cause I don't know, I don't know why. Do my thoughts go way too deep? What is wrong with me? Does somebody know? Cause I don't know, I don't know why. Now, lastly, at number five, we have smooth timbre and transient timbre compression. Compressors are a lot more powerful than they're given credit for. We usually think of them as strictly practical tools, one that can control dynamics so that other, more exciting or creative processing can occur. However, compressor settings can greatly impact the timbre and, in turn, the mood of the sound you're compressing. Now, this is accomplished by utilizing the attack and release settings of a compressor. But before we delve into how a compressor can affect the timbre of a signal, let's consider what creates timbre. That can be thought of in terms of ADSR, or attack, decay, sustain, and release. The attack of a signal is its initial transient. The decay is how long that original transient lasts. For example, a snare has a very loud and quick attack with a significant and quick decay. The sustain of a sound is the tone that's held out after this initial transient. The release can be thought of almost as the decay of this sustain, or in other words, the decrease in amplitude of the sustain. So for example, when a guitar string is plucked, the initial pluck is the attack and decay, but the ring of the note and its gradual decrease in amplitude is the sustain and the release. Now compressors have the power to affect all aspects of the ADSR of a signal. To understand how this is possible, let's take a look at a compressor's attack and release settings. Attack is the time it takes for the compressor to capture the signal and begin its compression. Release is the duration the compressor will continue to attenuate the signal. So if we keep ADSR in mind, a very quick compressor attack time will make the compressor begin to compress sooner, in turn attenuating the attack and decay of the signal's transient. If the release is longer, it will cause the compressor to hold onto the signal for longer, in turn attenuating aspects of the sustain and release. The longer the release, the more unrelated subsequent transients will be compressed, further establishing a smooth sound. Now the opposite is true for a longer attack and a shorter release. When these attack and release settings are chosen, the compressor will compress less and return to normal quicker when compressed. Now this will result in more transients passing through the compressor unaffected, causing a more dynamic and intelligible sound. Let's listen to a track compressed with these various attack and release settings to see if we notice a difference. So these are our picks for the top five compression techniques, but what do you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. Also again, definitely check out the blog post where you can find a lot more information on this topic and others like it. There's a link in the description box below. Also, if you're an artist or an engineer, send us one of your mixes at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. All you gotta do is set up this short account, upload the song, and we'll do the rest. But thank you so much for watching, we really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and share this video with your friends. This way we know if you'd like to see more videos like this one. Also, you can subscribe to the channel. We release new videos every week, and subscribing is the best way to stay up to date. There's a comment section where you can leave your thoughts on this video or a suggestion for a future video. And again, if you're an artist or an engineer and you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. Thank you again so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.